Just one, please? I suppose you're getting old enough now. I'll tell you. Yay! I'll tell you, but only if you do your chores when we are done. Yes, Pa. <laughs> I met him a long time ago. Long before anyone ever knew of him. He bumped into me when I was working. Sort of like you and me. Really? Yep. Except he wasn't searching for mud crabs like I was when you and I met. He told me his story. He didn't seem to like many people. <laughs> but I think I'm the only one who noticed. He liked me though. Maybe because we had a lot in common. Also like you and I. Both of our dads died when we were young. And we were both miners. Or mining. Not other people's business mining like you do. Oh, <laughs> stop teasing me. Ugh, mining is how we met. And that's when he told me about the first chapter of his life. He said that he was a young lad. And like you, he was no taller than a cyrodelic mud crab when it happened. And this is what he told me. My father had taken us hunting across the border into High Rock. They came upon our campsite just as we were bedding down. They were a hungry pack of horkers, and we were nothing to them but a school of fish. Bandits. They snatched my mother up as if she were a doll. It happened so quick she didn't even have a chance to scream. At least, not at first. I seen Dad pull an arrow from his quiver and shove it into one of them. They were too many. They chanted the eye of an orphan, and laughed. Our lives were nothing but a sick game. My father was beaten, his skin shredded, most of his bones broken. My mother was taken. I could hear her screams fading through the woods, the same way the light sets behind the mountain. Quieter, still loud, but quieter, then gone. I was hiding within my fur tent, then out of nowhere. Tough day for you, the bandit said clawing at my eye. If my father hadn't thrown his dagger into her, my screams would have disappeared beyond the woods with my mother's. As quickly as they had come down on us, they were gone. I looked at my father. I slung his arm over my shoulder, and we limped north. I pushed until my muscles burned, and then I pushed some more. Somehow, we made it to the ocean. The first sign of life that we had seen since the bandits was a ship captain. Captain Brinehammer was his name. His crew was getting ready to pull anchor. I'd like to use the word lucky, but... <laughs> his crew rushed off the ship and helped my father aboard. Two men dragged him down below deck as quickly as they could, and another politely escorted me behind them. A priestess of Kinnereth sat in the shadows. Put him on the table, she said, cutting off his clothes and addressing his wounds. <laughs> Other than the bandits, I'd never seen a person move so quickly. Her apprentice escorted me to my own cabin, and she told me that we were sailing for Dawnstar, that my father was in good hands, and that the rest was up to the divines. I remember little from the trip. I was a young kid, traumatized, hiding beneath a stranger's fur covers. I do remember the crew above deck singing, Two weeks to be at sea in Donstar we will be. Two weeks to be at sea in Donstar we will be. We arrived at Donstar two weeks to the day of boarding the ship. My father fought for three more days, and then he died. No sooner than my father closed his eyes, the Jarl had his guards take me. They put me in a carriage, and they escorted me to Honor Hall Orphanage in the city of Riften. I was met by this nag, Greylod. That's all you She was horrible. But the headmistress, Vija, bumped her out of the way and quickly put her in her place. Thank the divines. On occasion, when the woods around Riften were clear of the mist and fog, Vija brought all of us children out to play. We played a hide and seek, hiding behind the trees. And when she caught one of us, she would teach us about the vegetation whatever it was that we were hiding next to. I began to love gardening and reading once Vija taught me how. She even introduced me to magic. I used to beat myself up a lot 
not being able to help heal my father. I like to believe that her thinking and teaching me the school of restoration was her way of trying to help me find peace. She introduced me to destruction magic as well. She told me, the wilds are harsh, even beyond your own experience, but flames should only be used to protect yourself and to bring warmth to a bitter night. I listened, for the most part. I did like setting my foster brother's shoes on fire from time to time. <laughs> Not all of them, just Shadra. Leave me alone. <laughs> As I got older, I learned how to hunt food for the orphanage. Somehow a sick skeever made its way into Visha's room. It bit her while she was sleeping. She contracted brain rot. I was 17 when she died. Greylod the Kind, <laughs> kind my ass, took over. She made me continue to hunt, but what I caught was only for her to eat. She allowed me the privilege of sucking the marrow out of the bones and the bits of fat that she left on her plate to eat. Luckily, I had only suffered a few months of her kindness. The day that I became of age, I left the orphanage, my foster brothers and sisters behind me. I felt bad about leaving them behind me, but I had to get out of there. After just a couple of weeks of trying to feed myself, I stumbled across a mine echoed deep. I worked the mine for about a year. It was as cold and deep as the name suggested, but it paid and it taught me that spending my life slaving to feed another's mouth is not the life for me. After my year was up, I lived in the wilds for a bit. I got much better at hunting. I gardened. I traded game with travelers on the roads for books. A great many stories kept me company. It was a peaceful and humbling few years. But dad, I could never get my father out of my mind. It's funny, after all of those years of nightmares and remembering him close his eyes, I can't remember any other features about him. All I remember were the two holes in his neck and the markings carved into his chest. I later learned that they were the symbols of Molog Ball and Clavicus Vile. Vampires. Paxton. <laughs> he was a good guy. He would have liked you. Really? Really. Now go do your chores like you promised. Yes, Pa. Atta girl. I'll tell you more tomorrow. Paxton. <laughs> Two weeks to be at sea and Donstar we will be. Two weeks to be at sea and Donstar we will be. I can hear seagulls. We must be close. Yeah, about ready to get off this Dagon boat. One minute at sea and Donstar I will be. I wish I hadn't forgotten my bow and my cloak. The Sea of Ghosts is a cold place to journey. <laughs>